Hello everyone, my name is Kate and I'm the Go Kids Director here at Monterey Church. I am so excited that you've joined us today. In just a moment, we are gonna jump into worship and learn about God's Word together. But first, for all of you parents, if you'd like to dive deeper into today's lesson, check out our Families page on our website for more activities to do with your family throughout the week. Now finally, we'd love for you to join us on a Sunday morning. We meet here at our 401 Alvarado Street location on Sunday mornings at 10 a.m. We hope to see you soon. But now, it's time for us to worship, so let's go. Welcome to Story Lab. This week, we're talking about joy, while we take a look at the story of the end of the story, which is a pretty big reason to celebrate. Hey, I'm Sebastian. And I'm Skylar. We're talking about joy, which is choosing to celebrate what God is doing. Whoa, hold on. I love a good party as much as anyone, but I can't handle a luau when it's freezing! It's 97 degrees outside. But it's Arctic in here. Okay, I might have gotten a little carried away with the AC. Well, can you uncarry away? Fine. <laughs> so cold. Okay, I turned off the AC. Still cold. Yeah, well, it's gonna take a little bit to warm up. 
In the meantime, I am a human icicle. Yeah, you do look a little, uh, little frosty around the edges. I feel frosty around the edges. Oh, hey, that gives me a great idea. Like your great idea to crank the AC? <laughs> well, it involves a hot plate. Oh, I'm in. Let's make it. So, what are we doing? This. Oh, I'm gonna need more detail. Well, we're gonna frost this window to make it look like the middle of winter. Really? That's cool. Well, frosty. Of course. If you do this at home, you can use your actual windows. All you need is some Epsom salt, disc detergent, and a spray bottle. Plus a way to heat up the water in a cooking pot. We're using this hot plate. Which means you'll need a grown up to help. Step one, you need to boil one and a half cups of water. This is where we cut to three minutes from now. Three minutes later! Oh, oh there it's, it is. It's boiling. Step two, once the water is boiling, slowly stir in one cup of Epsom salt. When water is boiled, the molecules move quickly, creating more space between them. This allows the Epsom salt, or magnesium sulfate, to dissolve and fill the space between water molecules. This forms a solution. Thank you, sciencey voice. You're welcome. Step three, remove the mixture from the heat and allow it to cool slightly. Nice oven mitts. Thank you. Step four, stir in three tablespoons of dish detergent. Step five, pour the mixtures into the spray bottles. I think that's good. Yeah, should we go? Step six, add some stencils just for fun. <laughs> and step seven, spray. Ooh, the fun part. It smells good. It does. Done. Doesn't look very frosty yet. Well, we have to wait for the water to evaporate. One hour later! Can we look now? I think so. <gasps> Ooh! Looks like Christmas! Frost at its finest. <laughs> as the mixture on the glass cools, the Epsom salt is forced out of the solution as a solid, forming crystals! You can't really see much through the glass. Just a glimpse. <laughs> Speaking of not seeing things clearly yet, it's time for... The story before the story. Today we're in Revelation, the very last book of the whole Bible. The other 65 books of the Bible mostly tell the beginning and middle of God's story. How God created a beautiful, perfect world, but people turned away from God. How from the beginning, God had a plan to restore us into relationship. How God sent Jesus to live and die in our place and return to life and how Jesus followers began to spread the news about Jesus and start new churches everywhere they went. We live in this middle part of God's story, sharing the love of Jesus in a broken world. But Revelation tells what the end of God's story will be like. So today, we're starting at the end of the story. Take it away. Hey everyone, I'm Jen, and today, we're reading someone's mail. Don't worry though, this letter was written by Jesus' close friend John to a group of churches in Asia Minor, which we know today as Turkey. John wanted this letter to be passed around between the churches and read aloud to all the Jesus followers. I think he'd be thrilled to know we're reading his mail too. Now, there is a reason John had to write a letter instead of just visiting these churches. The Romans had exiled John to the island of Patmos. This was basically like being in jail. John wasn't stuck behind bars, but he sure couldn't go anywhere. 
John had spent his whole life sharing about the love of Jesus, and even on Patmos, he didn't give up hope. John continued to talk with God, and one day, the Holy Spirit gave John a vision. A loud voice like a trumpet called out, and Jesus himself appeared. Write on a scroll what you see. Send it to the seven churches in Asia Minor. John fell down at the feet of Jesus. Do not be afraid. I am the first and the last. I am the living one. I was dead. But now look, I am alive forever and ever. Jesus gave John special messages about things that were going to happen. Some would happen soon, while others would happen closer to the end of time. This is where our letter comes in. John recorded everything he saw and heard in a letter that later became known as the Book of Revelation. I, John, am a believer like you. I am a friend who suffers like you. As members of Jesus' royal family, we can put up with anything that happens to us. Some of the things that Jesus showed to John were terrible. Others were glorious. Most of them, to be honest, were really difficult to understand. But there was one part of the vision that John was most excited to share. The ending, that's the best part. I can imagine John weeping with joy as he wrote the last things that Jesus showed to him. I saw a new heaven and a new earth. I heard a loud voice from the throne. It said, look, God now makes his home with the people. He will live with them. They will be his people and God himself will be with them and be their God. We know that God is always with us, but in the time John writes about, we'll be able to see and experience God with our very own eyes and talk with God face to face. And it just gets better. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death and there will be no more sadness. There will be no more crying or pain. Things are no longer the way they used to be. He who was sitting on the throne said, I am making everything new. Imagine that. All we have ever known is a world full of brokenness. Even on our very best days, we struggle. We all know people who are sick or hurting. We know that there are people across the world who are hungry or don't have homes, or who are stuck in the middle of terrible wars. But here, Jesus promises that in the end, God will make everything brand new. For those who trust Jesus, there will be no more death, no more pain, or even tears. There will no longer be any curse. The throne of God and of the Lamb will be in the city. God's servants will serve him. They will see his face. His name will be on their foreheads. There will be no more night. They will not need the light of a lamp or the light of the sun. The Lord God will give them light. They will rule forever and ever. It's hard for our brains to think about forever. Maybe even a little scary, but life with God won't be boring. We'll get to continue working with God to take care of God's incredible creation. Just as each of us is uniquely made, God will have the perfect place for each of us to use our talents and gifts. There's so much we don't know, but we do know this. In the end, God will make right every single thing that's wrong, and our place in the story will be amazing. The end. Wow. It's so easy to think of heaven as just some floaty place in the clouds. With chubby baby angels and harps and stuff. <laughs> the real story is so much more. So, what, what is, is our part, part in the story? story? Right now, we're in the messy middle of the story. This world is broken. We all experience difficult things, but when we follow Jesus, we know that this is not the end. The Apostle Paul wrote, no eye has seen, no ear has heard, and no human mind has known. God has prepared these things for those who love Him. So what God will do is way bigger than even our imagination. All the things you love here on earth will be made brand new. If God made you really good at something like running or music or science now, it's possible you may enjoy it even more in heaven. And all that stuff that makes you feel sick or sad or scared now? God will wipe all that away and make everything right again. But sometimes that feels really far away. You're right, but even in our broken world, God is still at work now. And we can partner with God to help heal some of that brokenness by sharing the love of Jesus. 
so we can focus on what God is doing right now. And what God will do when we get to live forever with Jesus. I think those are the very best reasons to celebrate. See you next time. So here's the thing. Celebrate what God will do. I am also celebrating that it is no longer freezing in here. That's a reason for joy. Let's party. Cue music. <laughs> Thanks for joining us in the Story Lab. See you next time. <laughs>